Hi, this is Bishop Frank Dupre with another drive-by message. I'm on my way to the Potter's House. That's a Thursday night meeting that we do where we go to speak about the things of God and especially uh, things that are revelatory. Right now, I'm ministering on the fivefold ministry, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. But right now, tonight I want to talk about something that is uh, important for all of us. It's Holy Communion. I want to talk about it and I want to go back into Egypt. I want to go back to the days of Moses and I want to show you the symbolic understanding that we can get from the Old Testament and how it relates to us in the New Testament, okay? Now, as you can tell, I'm being careful. I'm using blinkers. I'm watching the traffic. I don't want to get too caught up with this so that uh, these messages are, are, are a blessing and they never end up with a problem for me also. But anyway, back in the day of Moses, when they were being released out of Egypt, you know, the Lord had said to get a lamb, a lamb for every house, and uh, bring your relatives into the house. You know, so it was, you know, grandma, grandpa, and the aunts and uncles, and everybody came together. All the children came together. And of course, the youngest child would ask the question, why is this night different? Why is this night special? Why do we eat uh, with, uh, with our sandals on? Why are we standing up? Uh, things like that. They asked these questions. It was the little children that were involved in it. And of course, uh, in, in Passover, even now, that tradition is still kept by Jewish people. One of the things that they do today is that they take at the very end of the meal, they have what they call the afikomen. And it's a special piece of matzah that they've taken and they've they've hidden it uh, so that children, the children would go find it. And what they do is they wrap it up and they usually bury it under a pillow or someplace like that. And without even realizing it, Jewish people are celebrating the crucifixion death and resurrection of Jesus when they have Passover meal because this was something that the early Christians were able to bring into the Passover celebration that that was able to show Jesus Christ because the afikomen there's three pieces of matzah and the middle piece is taken out wrapped and buried and then it's found and then it's it's a special thing so that represents the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The middle piece, of course, is Jesus. And he's the one that was broken. He's the one that was buried, hidden, and he's the one that was found. Amen. And so that's a wonderful aspect of communion. But you know, so many people don't know what to do with communion. They don't know if it should be something you do once a month, something you do on special occasions, uh, something that you do um, every week, uh, or whatever. You know, and, and a lot of people feel like, they just do it once a month. That's become the tradition of many Protestant churches. Once a month have communion. Some churches they feel, well, we do it when we feel led to do it. And they don't realize that what they're doing is they are, they're following um, the kind of the backlash of a tradition that is in the Roman Catholic Church. Of course, the Roman Catholic Church, they celebrate what they call the Mass every day. And every day people can have communion. And they, because that's available every Sunday in the Mass, uh, Protestant people, many times they feel like, well, we don't want to be Catholic, you know, we don't want to be like that, so we just have it once a month, you know. But, you know, every Sunday when the body of Christ got together in the book of Acts, we see that every Sunday they broke bread together. They celebrated the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And just because some people do it one way doesn't mean we shouldn't do it the right way. And the right way is that we should have communion available every single Sunday. Now, I'm going to tell you what we do in our church. A lot of churches don't let children take communion. We have the children taking communion, even the babies. You know why? Because it was the little children in Exodus that were asking the question, why is this night special? What is different about this night? Why are we doing this and why are we doing that? It brings the children in. Now, I believe that it's fine to have a time where when the children reach a certain age and they're able to accept Christ themselves, maybe seven years old or so, whatever, where they, they really start to understand now communion, that you can have a special time where now, on a special Sunday, we're going to have communion with understanding, the way the children are no longer taking it just because it's, it's there, but they're taking it because they believe and they recognize and see Jesus Christ crucified, died, risen again, and we commemorate those things, as Paul said, every time we have Holy Communion. And so we have the children there. Now we have communion in our church every Sunday. It's on our communion table, and what we do is we have it either open when we start service or closed. In other words, we cover it if we're going to have communion together as a group, as a family, but we have it open, uncovered, if we're going to have people come up and break bread by family, by friends, by themselves. And we do that 
during the worship. So at any time during our worship, anyone can come up and break bread, have a personal, intimate time with Jesus Christ, their Savior, at the altar of the Lord, at the table of communion. And so I encourage other pastors to do the same thing. Have the communion there, have it available. You can either do it together or you can have it as we do during worship. And you know what happens uh, while we are having the leaders lead the service and moving from one thing to the other, they'll remind people, you know, the communion is there. We remember his death, his resurrection, and his coming again. So when you come up, break bread and have that intimate time with Jesus Christ. And it goes all the way back to the Passover. Christ, the Bible says, is our Passover sacrifice for us. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And Jesus is the Lamb of God. So I pray that you will also have communion. If you're not a pastor, if you don't have the ability to introduce that into the church, have communion yourself. You can have communion every day at home if you want to. You can break bread every single day and remember His death and resurrection. And you know, the greatest thing about it is that there's three things that happen to us when we take communion the right way. When we do it the wrong way, Paul the Apostle says, many are weak, many are sick, many die before their time. In other words, many are spiritually weak, physically sick, and they die before they should because they do not recognize the body of Christ. They don't recognize Jesus Christ himself in the breaking of the bread. They don't recognize the body of Christ in the breaking of the bread. But if you recognize the body of Christ, if you recognize Jesus in your communion, then what you can have is you can have spiritual health. You can have physical health and you can have a long, blessed life. And so when you have communion, look for that blessing. Turn to the Lord, remember anything you've done, confess that to Jesus, thank Him for the blood, thank Him for the sacrifice He made, and then as you take communion, recognizing Jesus is there, it's His body and His blood, and we are receiving that by faith. And when you do that, if you're spiritually weak, God can make you spiritually strong. We had a lady one day in church, where I was preaching about something, and she had uh, cancer, she had a tumor cancer in the breast and I said to her you know there's healing in communion God can heal you right now today in communion and she took communion that day in faith believing that Jesus Christ could heal her in the communion and you know what happened went to the doctor the lump was gone she was totally miraculously healed of cancer because she took communion according to the Bible believing that if you take it worthily you can expect spiritual health physical health, and a long life. So I pray this has been a blessing to you. Don't forget, visit my website, www.frankdupray.com. You'll find teachings on there, video on there, different things and announcements about things going on. Keep me in prayer. I appreciate your prayers. God bless you now and have a great night.